Hello. Today, I like to talk about how it is the small things that matter. I'm a computer scientist, so I work a lot on computers. I always check emails, Twitter, Facebook, on iPhone, and also texting all the time. And my friend tells me she's a geek. <laughs> Maybe I am. But because of all the works on computers, I often have sore back. So I try to massage it or stretch around it, but it wouldn't work. And one day, my friend tells me, Mizuki, I have a good technique for your back. Don't massage all over your body, but rather ask somebody to press their thumbs right below your shoulder blade and hold them there for a few minutes, and it would work much better. So I tried, and he was right. It really worked. These key pressure points are known to exist in the human body, and they are called tsubo in Japanese. In biology, there is a concept called keystone, which may illustrate another form of tsubo. Back in 1990s, a group of scientists conducted an interesting experiment. They went to the beach and split the beach into two parts. From one area, they removed all the starfishes and kept the other one untouched. And they came back after a few months and discovered that the total biomass of the area that they took all the starfishes was reduced to less than half compared to the one that they kept untouched. And it was surprising to all these biologists because the number of species of the keystone was very small in size, but yet they had a huge impact on the entire ecosystem. These type of species are known as keystone in an ecosystem. Keystones are the type of species that are small in their biomass, but yet would have a huge impact on the entire ecosystem when they are removed. So in the graph, you see the left top corner. These species are known as keystones, and you see the starfish over there. I heard about this theory from a colleague of mine about two years ago, and at that time, I was running a project, and he asked us, who do you think might be a keystone person in your group members? I thought that was an interesting question, so I decided to investigate. In the group project, there was myself who was leading the project, another designer, his assistant designer, another scientist like myself, artist, and a few students. And it was not hard to find a keystone person, but it turns out that the per keystone person was this assistant designer. Because she was the one who was actually drawing a plan, making logos, so making real outcome of the project. So if she were to leave the project, it would have a huge impact. So talking of human relations, these days we can visualize human networks using the information from the web. Indeed, there is a service called SPICY that I take part in in its development. It's a service that Given a person's name, it goes on the web and gathers all the information about that person and particularly finds who that person is related with and visualizes the human network. For example, this is the human network of myself found on the web. You can see who I am related with on the web. 
You can also Google your own name, and maybe you will find one of your spicy page on the search results. And clicking on that, you will be able to see your human network from the web. This service, Spicy, was started in 2008 with about 100,000 people's names registered on the site. And it gradually increased the number of people registered in response to users' request to investigate on a particular person. And we would receive about 1,000 pages request every year, every day. And over the four years, we have reached about more than 1 million people's pages registered. But what's interesting is that we also receive delete requests from users who wish not to participate or be on the web page for privacy reasons or for other reasons. And the interesting question is, what would this effect have an effect on our service? Do we have a starfish-like web page in our system? And it turns out that deleting a single page may have a strong effect on the entire system. Deleting on a, part a particular page, even if that particular page does not receive many visitors. This is because deleting one page does not mean only taking that page out of the service, but also deleting the path to other pages on the site. And we can see, investigate, whether a particular page is a keystone or not by looking at the number of visitors before and after the deletion of that particular page. And our empirical studies indicate that there might be a web page keystone. This is how SPICY looked like back in 2008 when it was launched. And this is how it looks now. And this movie shows how the top page of the SPICY site changed over time. People might look for the keystone, but what is equally important is the mechanism or the environment or the layout of the site that caused small things to become a keystone. The site did not may have, may did not have the keystone from the beginning, but it may develop the keystone throughout its development. So I would say that any system that is maintained by people will inevitably become to have a keystone from ecosystems, human body, to human relations, and web is not an exception. It is the small things that matter, maybe even more than you think. Thank you very much.